Hey, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video. Got some pretty major news to talk about in today's video, including a PlayStation 4 exclusive in Dissidia Final Fantasy NT coming to PC. No, it's not a Last of Us, it's not an Uncharted 4, it's not a God of War, but it is a new Final Fantasy game and it's a Final Fantasy fighting game that did have a little bit of a lukewarm reception, but the best thing about the PC release is a free edition is gonna come too, and I'm pretty interested in that and seeing how this game will resonate on PC. There's a lot to talk about with that and also, Speaking of a lot to talk about, I really want to talk about Microsoft's new gaming studios and its commitment to PC gaming in 2019. PC Gamers got a great article on that, and there's so much to digest when talking about that because yes, while initially at a surface level, you might look at Microsoft acquiring all of these studios like an Obsidian, like a Ninja Theory, like an Enexile, and you might be absolutely upset about that, but there is a lot of good coming out of that too. I think Microsoft has made some major strides in the last couple of years when it comes to PC gaming. You go back a couple of years to the release of like Gears of War Ultimate Edition and Quantum Break. God damn, those games were terrible. But now it seems like they're really finding a formula that works on top of Game Pass. So we'll talk a lot about that as well. But first up, let's talk about Dissidia Final Fantasy NT Free Edition coming west for PS4 and PC on March 12th. This was a game that was released all the way back in January of 2018. I personally was very excited for it because I had played the Dissidia games on the PlayStation Portable. Which, by the way, if you guys want to play those games, you can get the PSP emulator really easy on PC. Super easy to run if you have a decent PC. And I'll leave you guys to getting absolutely legitimate copies of those games. Do not disappoint me. But yeah, now we have Dissidia Final Fantasy Fantasy NT. This was the modernized version and, you know, expecting Dissidia coming to the PlayStation 4, I thought that was going to be much better than it was. Unfortunately, from a single player standpoint, it left a lot to be desired. They really did try to take the game to an esports route. They wanted to make it competitive and I thought it kind of lost that appeal that Dissidia Final Fantasy had in the past. It's supposed to be more of an arcadey fighter and it still retains some of those elements, but I did think this game was a step backwards. However, if you're a fan of Final Fantasy, so many iconic characters here and it is now coming to PC in the form of a free edition. Now, I believe that there is also going to be a paid edition, but here's the statement that Square Enix put out. Dissidia Final Fantasy NT Free Edition offers players the opportunity to try out a limited roster of characters on a weekly basis. A variety of characters and weapons are also available for individual purchase. This ensures that favorite characters can be permanent member of a player's roster. Players of the Free Edition can also play uh, online against existing players of the full game. Developed in partnership with a veteran fighting game studio, Team Ninja from Tecmo Koei Games, Dissidia Final Fantasy NT is a unique 3v3 team-based brawler where players work together to overcome their rivals and dominate the battlefield, featuring legendary characters from throughout the the Final Fantasy series, powerful summons online and offline modes, character skins, and a new original story. Now, yes, it's getting microtransactions added onto it, but as a free game, that's just to be expected. I really hope they give you the option to just buy the full game right out the gate. That game is readily available on the PlayStation 4 for like 20 or $30. A lot of retailers still have it at like 60 bucks though. So if like a complete version was released at $60, yikes, that's all I have to say about that. However, as a free-to-play offering, Final Fantasy does have a big fan base and I do think people will check this out just based on interest alone. Just looking at the game, when you see pictures of the game on Steam, hey, to the naked eye, it looks like a really appealing game. I think once you break through the surface, though, and you see some of the fundamental errors of the game, might be a little bit disappointing, but hey, now is a free offering. I think a lot of people will check it out. Another game coming to PC. I can't complain about that, especially as a free edition. That'll be dropping March 12th. I'm excited to check it out. Hopefully, it's a good port. Square Enix has been doing a relatively decent job with all of their Japanese releases on PC. Let's just hope Kingdom Hearts 3 happens very soon because now we've got pretty much every game under the sun except for the Kingdom Hearts franchise. Come on. Would it kill them to release 1.5, 2.5, 2.8 and then Kingdom Hearts 3 on PC? We've been waiting so long for that. Let's hope sooner rather than later that does come to fruition. Moving on from that, there's been a lot of talk about Phil Spencer, Microsoft, and what they're doing with PC gaming. Of course, they've got a lot of games on the Windows Store. And an article over at PC Gamer, I'll leave the link in the description box down below. And he talked a lot about Microsoft's plans with PC gaming going into the future. And here's what he said. Do remember that Microsoft has been in acquisition mode. They've gotten some major studios from Ninja Theory, Obsidian, Pillars of Eternity, guys, and In Exile. They are acquiring some major, major studios. So while from a first party standpoint, Microsoft has always been pretty bad. After these acquisitions, I see that tide turning pretty quickly. And best of all, the games will still at least be playable on PC. While they won't be released on Steam and other platforms,
platforms, at least they will be available on the Windows 10 store. And here's what Phil Spencer said, quote, we want to empower game creators to extend the reach of their games to the broadest global base possible. That said, we understand that there are certain types of games that may be best experienced within a specific context or with a specific input method. Obsidian, In Exile, and all our studios will have the resources to reach players on any device and will support the decisions each studio makes regarding the platform and features that let them deliver the experience they want for gamers. Now, at a surface level, you might think Microsoft acquiring all of these studios is really bad because that's going to contain all of these studios to releasing their games on the Windows 10 store. However, there's a striking difference in all of these cases and what Epic is doing with, say, a game like Metro Exodus. A game like Metro Exodus, that game was already in development. They had the resources to release that game on Steam, and yet because of Epic, that game's release was stripped away. In this case, Microsoft firsthand is going to have a big input in making these games possible. Microsoft has a lot of money, money that Obsidian can't come by just like that, money that a Ninja Theory can't come by just like that. And in the case like Ninja Theory, they have been doing some smaller games. They did Hellblade Send with Sacrifice, which was a budget release. Obsidian doesn't have all the money in the world, but could you imagine what they could do with more financial resources? And in Exile, of course, the opportunities are limitless. And best of all, all of these games are going to be available through Game Pass. We're not going to have to pay $60 a pop for all of these games. Game Pass is so incredible because I regularly get these offers that I can sign up for a month for like $2. I've seen six-month passes be available for $30. They are constantly putting the service on sale. And if you're smart about how you can go about it, you can get a year of Game Pass for like $60. Bucks. That's the price of one game, and you're going to have access to all of these games. That's why I look at a game like Crackdown 3, and yes, it's getting bashed from a review standpoint, point, but from a review standpoint, I feel like people are judging the game based on a $60 release. If you're paying $60 for Crackdown 3, you should be smacked. I'm sorry. There's no reason you should be paying $60 for that game. You might be saying, oh, if I get Game Pass, I won't own the game. Well, goddamn, you pay $2 for a month of Game Pass, you play through the entire game, and you're done. Your Crackdown 3 experience is over. I don't see an issue with not owning the game. Do you really want to have the ability to download Crackdown 3 whenever you want? You can just re-up your Game Pass subscription, and on top of that, Game Pass gets you other great games like Forza Horizon 4, Gears of War 4. And right now, the lineup is pretty weak on PC, but that lineup is going to get so much better because all of those first-party games are coming to PC, whether it be a Gears 5, whether it be Ninja Theory's next project, Obsidian's game After the Outer Worlds, In Exile's game. All those first-party games are coming to Game Pass, and that inherently benefits PC gamers. So while, yes, it is exclusive to the Windows 10 store because of how cheap Game Pass is, I just think it's a winner all around. Has Microsoft done PC gaming absolute justice? No, but I think it is so much better than going back years ago to what they did with Gears of War Ultimate Edition, Quantum Break. God damn, were those games train wrecks. Thank God it's gotten better than that because I play through a game like Gears 4. I play a game like Forza Horizon 4 and those games just run so, so well on PC. I didn't have to pay $60 for those games and as long as they can continue to grow the Game Pass library, I think that is going to be the route to go. Again, the offerings on PC are a little bit weak right now because the majority of them are just the first party games, but you've got to enough quality titles where I think signing up for $2 a month here and there is well worth it. You can play through a Crackdown 3, Forza Horizon 4, Gears 4, Halo Infinite's going to be a part of the service, Gears 5, whatever other games they have in the works and in the pipeline. And now that they're actually bettering their first party, I think the possibilities are endless. And thank God us as a PC gamer will be able to play all these games. Unfortunately, if you own a PlayStation 4 and that's your primary platform, you won't be able to play Obsidian's next game, at least as a PC gamer. Microsoft will be bringing these games to the Windows 10 store, and I'm grateful for that. And that's going to conclude this video, guys. I talked a lot about that Microsoft thing, but there's a lot to digest there, and I do think Microsoft is getting some negative backlash from PC gamers just because of how big of a train wreck the Windows 10 store was from a get-go. But I really think them as a publisher, they're getting better and better, and the acquisitions, while at a surface level, they might be a little bit disappointing to you. We really have to see with all of these resources what Obsidian and In Exile and all of these other studios can put out. And also, the City of Final Fantasy NT is coming to PC on March 12th. Do you have any interest in that? It is going to come out as a free edition. There are going to be some microtransactions tacked on. We don't know if there's going to be a full complete version to buy. I'll keep you guys posted on that. But that's going to conclude this video. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate it if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of 
of the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.